to Migration 101 with Sam and Bean. So today we have, as usual, Mr. Bean Fang as our migration agent, and we'll be focusing more on skill migration, which is 189, 190, and 489 visa. So let's start with Bean Fang. So Bean, how are you today? Welcome back to the show. Good, thanks. Thank you for having me again. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. So as you know, for um, all this uh, skill migration um, question that comes to you, uh, you know, how much, you know, how many points they need to score, yep. you know, which state they should move to, yep. or, you know, which courses they should choose, and all this. So we'll be talking about more um, around all these sections today. So let's start with uh, the difference. What is the difference between uh, skill migration subclasses, which is, uh, which are 189, 190, 489, versus um, other visas or amongst them? Yeah, good question. So I guess with the uh, 189, the mm -hmm. most important thing is that it's uh, PR straight away. You're not depending on a state government or anyone to sponsor you for that. Okay. Um, the 190 and the 489 do require the state governments or the regional governments to sponsor you. Okay. And now the, the difference between the 190 and the 489 is that the 190 gets you permanent residency uh, I guess right away, yes. the 489 is a four year temporary visa. Okay. And once you've lived and worked in a regional area for about two years, okay. then you can apply for permanent residency after that. Okay, so the basic difference between 190 and 489 is if you receive the approval yep. after 190 replication, you are a permanent resident yes. straight away. That's right. right. You don't have to lodge any other application. Yep. Whereas with 489, which is I believe regional sponsored skill migration mm, yeah. that is actually approved for four years but after two years you might be eligible or you are eligible for permanent visa permanent residency visa applications yeah, right that's right okay all right that's good now um if you could explain a little bit about the points requirement in general for all kind of skill migration mm, yeah so the the point system i guess uh right now the minimum number of points you need is 65 um, but there's various ways of, I guess, um, scoring. So, mm -hmm. you know, some of those things are your age, uh, your English language scores, okay. uh, what, your, what qualifications you studied, um, and then, you know, you can even score points for having studied in a regional area of, of Australia. Okay. And then if you happen to have a spouse mm -hmm. who uh, has an occupation that's on the, on the relevant list, okay. and then they can get a successful skills assessment, then okay. they can also add points to you. Okay, so let's, to give an example, so let's say one of our um, candidates, yeah. they are coming from overseas, right? And um, they have Bachelor of IT mm -hmm. from overseas university, yeah. right? And they have, let's say, five to six years of experience yeah. in overseas in the relevant field as well, mm -hmm. as a system analyst, yeah. for example, um, with IELTS score seven individual. Um, given this kind of scenario, do you think a person might be eligible for either of those subclass visas, 189, 190, 489? Yeah, um, I think they definitely do have a good chance of yeah. applying for one of those. So, you know, 65 points is the minimum, but if, for example, we use, we'll use the IT example. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's so many people doing IT yes. that you probably need to score more than 65, probably okay. around the 75 oh. mark to get an invitation to apply. I see. But, you know, back to your original question, yes, there is an opportunity for them. I see, okay. Now, um, with uh, 489, mm -hmm. so obviously, as you mentioned um, in previous discussions, that uh, the difference between 190 and 489, obviously, uh, direct permanent residency. Yeah. Um, um, also, is there any difference between state sponsorship and regional sponsorship? when it comes to 489 and 190? Yeah, so there, there is a bit of a difference. So okay. state sponsorship is almost like the, um, the state government of New South Wales sponsoring you. Okay. Uh, regional sponsorship, it, so New South Wales, it, we'll use that as an example, is split into I think four or five different regions. Okay. Um, so you have to see which regions are willing to sponsor what occupations, mm -hmm. and then it's those regions that end up supporting you. I yeah. see. Okay, all right, so which means, uh, so uh, a state can sponsor you, but sometimes you might be refused from regional government or vice versa. Yeah, right, that's right. Okay, so if you're eligible for, let's say 489, um, does it contribute to more points as opposed to 190? Mm. So the uh, 190 visa gives you yes. five extra points if it's approved. Okay. Um, the 485 gives you 10 extra points. 489. Sorry, 489 gives you yes. 10 extra points. 10 extra points. Yeah. 
but um, only um, I would say the downside would be that you are not approved with the uh, permanent residency straight away yes. with 489. You have yes. to stay with the visa for minimum two years. Yeah, that's correct. And meet yeah. certain condition maybe as work. In, you have to work for at least one year yeah. in that particular yeah. region. Yeah. And uh, does it have to be in a relevant occupation or in any occupation they can work yeah. if they get it approved? Yeah. Uh, technically, it's any occupation. Yes. There's nothing at the permanent visa stage that says you must have worked in the same occupation that you were nominated for. Okay. Um, but you know, in terms of your own skills, mm -hmm. it's probably better if you are able to find jobs in your relevant field. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Also, um, uh, do you have any specific suggestions for when for those candidates if they want to actually um, choose different states or regional areas? Um, yeah. If they're living in Sydney or Melbourne, you know, there are two of the uh, you know the most crowded and busiest city. Yeah. So if they want to move out to different regional areas or the states, is there any specific suggestions that you would be able to share with us? Um, I think right now there are some pretty exciting things happening in South Australia. Yes. Uh, recently, they came in with the um, with the Innovation Entrepreneur Program, okay. and then also Canberra recently came out with their um, ACT Matrix, okay. which is a, a different way of assessing people mm -hmm. uh, who are suitable for a state nomination. I see. So okay. uh, I think you know, um, yes, as you mentioned, New South Wales and Victoria are extremely crowded and yeah. extremely hard to get mm -hmm. uh, nomination. So I would recommend, you know, keep your ears and eyes open and look for opportunities in other states. Yeah, great. I think um, that's, that would be very valuable for our viewers as well mm -hmm. to know about which states to browse for and, you know, yeah. how to go about it and so forth. So is there any specific um, recommendations or suggestions that may come from you in terms of choosing a subject or the subject that, yeah. like, you've been studying right now? Mm -hmm. um, or if that, have, if that has any specific impact? Yeah. Uh, for those students maybe finishing um, next year in 2019 or about to finish in next semester yeah. um, in different subjects or uh, is there any specific suggestions for them? Um, I guess for people who are probably in their last year it's a yes. bit hard to change anything yes. but even then I would re recommend looking at your situation now go and see a migration specialist to see yeah. what options you may have. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are just in their first year or just choosing maybe have a look at what's on the medium to long term list because ultimately if you would like permanent residency then uh, those lists right now are the best guide for you. I see. Yeah. Also, last but not the least actually in this specific category, um, any suggestions to actually um, raise points for, for example, through different means like um, PDE or not yeah. test or anything that you may you know, suggest yeah. to our viewers as well? Mm. So I would say that start doing your English test early. Okay. You know, the earlier you know where you currently stand, mm -hmm. uh, the earlier you know how you can improve, sure. as opposed to leaving it until after you've graduated. Which a lot of people does actually. I understand. It's very, as you can right. see, it's very important, guys. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. And I think as you're studying, start building work experience, even though it may not count, mm -hmm. but it gives you a better chance of getting uh, work experience as soon as you graduate, yeah. and then that starts counting straight away. So that work okay. experience, you know, is very valuable. And one year of it gets you five points. Yes, that's, yeah. that's really good. Also, if somebody wants to use their overseas experience, for example, mm -hmm. let's say um, they have done their bachelor degree in IT or any other yeah. um, field, and then they have worked for five years or six years in overseas, and then they came to Australia, did masters of IT, yeah. are they still eligible to use that overseas experience yeah. that they have actually worked there for that long? Yeah. Um, so that answer depends on mm -hmm. what occupation you're in, yeah. but in IT, generally, yes, if your bachelor degree overseas is counted as equivalent to a bachelor here, okay. then any experience accumulated afterwards is I counted. See. So that's, that's another major factor, obviously. Yeah. Um, as you guys can see, actually, not necessarily all the bachelor degree or master's degree that you're actually studying or you have studied in overseas uh, will be um, in the same level, the same level as Australian degree. So if it is not, then it may be considered as associate degree or lower. So that's why I actually also need to consult migration agents to actually confirm whether your bachelor or master's degree is in the same level as Australian degree or not. Otherwise, you may actually lose points on that too. Um, I think I'm correct on that one, right? Yeah, that's correct. That's <laughs> yeah, correct. right. So, um, okay, just the last question actually. Um, we have had a lot of ups and downs with ACTs and a lot of rumors around ACTs and screen on apps and a lot of people actually, they're going back and forth with yeah. ACT as well. Um, what's the deal right now? Yeah. So um, the ACT have come out with this new system of ranking 
uh, people in terms of uh, who they would want to sponsor yeah. on, on the 190 visa. Mm -hmm. So it's, they've got their own point score system, which yep. looks very similar to the, uh, to the immigration point system, okay. but they only require a minimum 20 points. I see. The way they allocate points is a little bit different also, um, but the, the main thing is, uh, you know, you have to satisfy both the Canberra, uh, I guess, point score system, mm -hmm. and also you still have to satisfy the immigration point score. Okay. So, um, I guess the, the main thing is there are two different, uh, I guess, streams. One is for residents in yeah. Canberra already, and one is for offshore um, applicants. So, you know, if you're in Australia, then you may want to consider moving to Canberra in order to meet those requirements. Yes. But if you're offshore, then you just follow the, the point scoring system and see whether you meet the requirements or not. Great. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Ben. Thanks for, I think it's very fruitful information. And viewers, I guess um, you guys actually received a lot of fruitful information in these today. I hope that everyone watching these today um, will really help deciding what kind of uh, what pathway you should go for whether it's 189 190 or 489 um, wherever you go i believe that you should really consult migration agents and um, as part of today's discussion in episode two um, you may be actually eligible to receive 150 dollar discount and to sit with mr bin fang himself um 101 um, to have a free chat about migrations if you share and comment as much as you can and thank you for watching today